plate, that made it kind of rock around. So I took the screw out, and that made it flat, but then once I got the power strip installed above that, it became clear pretty quickly that it wasn't going to work out. The faceplate itself has a bit of a thickness to it, and with that shelf, the second shelf installed, it just made the whole thing too tight. So I took the shelf back out, and then just sort of stuck the Akai SG-01K on top of the Roland sound canvas. And I did actually have to take the Velcro out from underneath the sound canvas in order to get it to fit. But yeah, it worked out just fine. Everything's in there tight. And then I took the Velcro and put it behind in between the units so they're not sliding around on the back side. And then finally, there was the Kawai G-Mega, which slid in from behind just fine, being pretty much the exact right height to make things nice and snug. And a little more Velcro to hold those in place, keep those from sliding around, and there we go. That's the basics of the MIDI Rack Mountain all put into place. And I gotta say, it is looking pretty Cold imposing already. Just all of these particular modules stuck together in an 8 u rack. And that is a sight to behold. I am loving what I'm seeing. Of course, I love it even more with some power, and that was next up. And unfortunately, these power cables provided an immediate source of frustration. Some of them are really long, some of them just clunky in their design. I did my best, though, try to get everything tucked in place and out of the way. And then for the ones that use a wall wart on the end, I used some of these little extensions. So that way I could actually plug it into the power strip, because otherwise... <laughs> They don't go in sideways, they go in like facing up or down, and there's just no space to make that happen inside of here. So, yeah, really just wanted to get everything all connected so I could power it on and, I don't know, just admire it really quickly, make sure everything is gonna do what it's supposed to. I mean, I've tested all of these individually, I know that they work, but I wanna see them working with this power strip. So let's go ahead and turn it on. That is immediately satisfying. I love clicking all of those power buttons, seeing everything turn on like this. But the only thing even more satisfying is turning all of them off again. The outer defenses are down, but we still have far yeah, to go. That's awesome. Secure the rebel well, next up, I spent a while doing a little bit of cable management that, for the power, the just trying to get everything out of the way as much as I could because we're about to crowd it up a whole lot more. Like, everything's got a MIDI in as well as audio out. <laughs> that's got to go to the MIDI through box and then our mixer down there. So, yeah, let's get started. We're going to begin here with the MIDI cables, and I've still got the ones that I used from the previous MIDI mountain, so that'll do. It'd be kind of nice to have some shorter ones, but eh, for now, this is just fine. And getting them all connected is easy enough. It's just getting the MIDI ins connected to the MIDI through, which sends MIDI out. And then the one main MIDI connection on the through box, that's going to connect to our external MPU 401 unit that's connected to the PC. And then it's time for another bit of cable management of sorts <laughs> to try and get just a little bit more space for all the audio cables that are coming up. That is, is going to be a mess. Hours. Reason being that pretty much all the cables that I have are three feet long, and they don't really need to be any more than a foot long. But it's what I've got on hand, so this is what's going to do for now. And they're all going to be going through the mixer in the stereo, and they connect to the mixer with quarter-inch TRS on that side and then the other side. Some of them have quarter-inch and then some of them have RCA, just depends. But I had cables for both of them, not using any adapter. What I don't have a cable for is something to go from the output of the mixer the equalizer is RCA only, and the output of the mixer is through XLR. So it does have a quarter-inch auxiliary output. I'm not going to be using that. I'm just going to order an RCA to XLR adapter and get that sent to me real quick. And until then, we can test it out using the headphone output on the front of the mixer. And since I've tested both of the Rolands and the Yamaha before on the channel, let's try something out that we haven't yet. Like the G-Mega. It's got a built-in demo mode, so we'll let that do its thing. Override two 
Oh heck yeah, doesn't that sound awesome? I really like the sound of this unit. It's got a very unique tone to it. You can see why I wanted it in here. But anyway, a couple days passed and the XLR adapter showed up. So this will allow us to just go straight from the mixer's main outputs to the stupid equalizer. And I'm gonna go from the mixer to the equalizer's, I guess, DVD input. Doesn't really matter what it's labeled, they're all the same, really. And then I've got another cable to go from the rack out of the mixer to our computer speaker, whatever they may be. And it takes left and right RCA and puts that to a single three and a half millimeter female jack on the other end. For now, though, I just wanted to test this thing out. Starting with that equalizer, I have increasing doubts that it's gonna be any good. Well, whatever, let's try to get the plastic off there. Well, that was exciting. Let's finally test this thing out and see if it actually has a real spectrum analyzer or if it's dumb. Well, that's unfortunate. Sure is unfortunate. It's the same display no matter what kind of audio you put in there. It just increases the height with the volume. That's it. And you know what? If I'd have waited, I would have seen the tech bone got pretty much this exact same thing, just slightly aesthetically differently. But I actually bought this thing before his video ever came out. So yeah, whenever uh, he did a video on that and I saw it, I'm like, oh no, I bet mine is just as terrible. And it is, and worse, with the rack mount. I think I bet the actual 10 band equalizer itself does work but I don't plan to use that. Like I said earlier, I really just wanted this for a spectrum analyzer, a VFD on the front, and it doesn't even do that. Now we'll just pretend that's not there. Let's go ahead and try this out with a MIDI input instead of just the built-in demos. And while we will be plugging this into a computer here pretty soon to get some MIDI files playing, right now I'm using my Arteria key step from my main synth setup, and this will allow us just to get some basic MIDI out going and see kind of what we've put together here. Okay, so I just got a simple sequence put into here and let that play. And now that I've got them all on the same instrument, which is this general MIDI number one, except for the MT32. And they're all on the grand piano, just the default piano. So let's go MT32 first. There's that. Next will be the SC55. Next, the MU80. Next is the Akai SG01K. And then last, the Kawai Z Mega. Now they each have their own individual settings for chorus and reverb and things like that. <laughs> I, I could go and like make them all completely dry or completely wet or whatever, but I just have them on the default things right now. Uh, MT32 though, even though it's blinking on number one here, I actually had to switch the piano to MIDI channel two. And I just put the rest of these on channel two and then this one sees channel two and channel one. Eh, it's just weird because this is before general MIDI, so it treats things a little bit Not a big problem. In, uh, computer setting over you know, games are just going to give it the instructions it needs as long as something is designed for the MT32 for instance. But anyway, uh, something else that's kind of fun is now, since they're all going at once here, we can just uh, have them all going together. Operation complete. We have the intelligence we need and the rebel base is ours. Victory today. Let's start. There we go. 